Bible story is one of my favorite all-time stories in the entire Bible, and I'll tell you why in a second. But today we are reading from John chapter 11, and it's the story of when Lazarus died. But Jesus did something amazing. And so I'm really excited to share the story with you. Lazarus is a brother of Mary and Martha. And do you guys remember the story of Mary and Martha? Um, Martha is busy cleaning all the time. And when Jesus comes over and Mary is sitting at his feet and then Martha gets mad at her sister and says, Lord, shouldn't she be helping me? That's Mary and Martha. But they also have a brother and the brother's name is Lazarus. And so Jesus is really good friends with Lazarus as he is with Mary and Martha. And so in the story, Jesus is in a different city and Lazarus and Mary and Martha live in Bethany. And so it's quite a ways away from where they are. And there's a messenger that goes to Jesus and the messenger says, Lazarus is really sick. Now, in order for a messenger to go to Jesus or anybody to say, hey, this person's really sick, it must be really serious. And so Jesus knows that Lazarus is really sick and that usually means that he's going to die when a messenger comes because that means hurry and come back so you can say goodbye before they pass away. But Jesus does not hurry back to Bethany to say goodbye to Lazarus or to even heal Lazarus or fix him before he dies, which he could do because he's Jesus. But he stays for two days. Two days later, Jesus says, okay, now it's time to go back to Bethany. So they go to Bethany. Now remember they're by foot, so it takes a while for them to even get there. And when they're still like two hours away from being at uh, Mary and Martha's house where Lazarus is, Martha's running up to him and says, Jesus, Jesus, my brother died. And if you were here, you could have saved him. And so she was upset. She's like, why didn't you come sooner? Jesus says to Martha, don't worry, your brother will rise again. Then Jesus says to Martha, where's your sister, Mary? Take me to her. And so Jesus goes to see Mary and she tells him the same thing that Martha says. Lord, Lord, if you were only here, he wouldn't have died. And so I can imagine that Mary and Martha might have been pretty upset with Jesus. Like, where were you? You should have been here so he didn't die. You could have healed him, but you didn't come. And I don't blame them. I would have been upset with him too. So Jesus says, take me to his tomb. Then Jesus tells the people around him, Take the stone away from the tomb. There was a big rock rolled in front of the tomb and that's how they would bury people back then. So here they were around the tomb of Lazarus. Many people were around, including Mary and Martha. And Jesus says, take the stone away. Then Jesus starts to pray. He says, Father, thank you that you have always heard me. I know you always hear me. But I say this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they might believe that you sent me. And then in a loud voice, he says, Lazarus, come out. And guess what? Lazarus comes out. He has his striped linen around him that they wrap the body in and the linen just falls off of him. And he starts walking out. Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. What an amazing story. So here's what I want you to think about kids. Like Mary and Martha, how they were very concerned. Where were you? Where were you? If you were here two days ago, he wouldn't have died, right? God's timing sometimes doesn't look like our timing. Have you ever prayed for something and you're waiting for it to happen? Waiting for it to happen? waiting for it to happen. And you're like, God, where are you? I have, I know what that's like too. But God tells us that his timing is perfect. And in the story of when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, everyone around thought that Jesus was too late. But guess what? He wasn't. So while we're waiting for our prayers to be answered, 
Maybe there's some learning that God has for us in that waiting season. So I challenge you, if you're praying and praying and praying and waiting for God to, to answer your prayer, I challenge you to ask God right now, what is it you want me to know or learn right now while I'm waiting for you to answer this prayer? And so it might be a small little prayer to us or a really big prayer. And we just have to ask God to reveal himself in the waiting. Let's pray. God, thank you for the story of Lazarus and what a huge story it is. Thank you that you rose Lazarus from the dead. What a huge, powerful miracle. And we thank you that you are still the same God. That scripture says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we can pray big prayers. And sometimes you want us to wait. And waiting is hard. So God, give us patience and teach us and show us where you are moving while we are waiting. In Jesus' name. Amen. January's memory verse is one of my favorites. Let's get our Bibles out. Romans 15 verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Let's do it again. Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Good job, kids.